Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Today we have some interesting news from the folks at Blender Foundation. Blender 3.1, the alpha is here. So just in case you've been wondering, when is this gonna come out? It is here. The folks at Blender Foundation are sticking to the long-term support timeline and this makes sense. Of course, you can also notice that Blender 3.0 is now in its beta. B-E-A beautiful stuff. And for those who like to come through, check this, download it, play with it. Of course, you can also go ahead and see it. Popping this open, you would see that nothing has actually changed. Right here, it still says is Blender 3.1.0, the alpha, which makes sense because if you go in to play with everything that you can find, find here it is exactly the same thing that you have with 3.0 there is no huge update with this yet and that makes more sense because if you actually go over to the reference page which is here you would see that we only have a schedule and if you go ahead to check out the schedule you would also see that some of these things are yet to be deliberated on or you know they're still being deliberated there is no tentative or final time that this would be released yet but of course for those who like to read up on 3.0 there is also a schedule for this which makes sense and you can see that folks at Blender Foundation are sticking to it. Meanwhile, if you download 3.0 right now, you can see that we have a brand new splash screen, which is brilliant. I love it. Coming directly from Sprite Fry. 3.0 is looking pretty, looking nice. 3.1 is definitely going to look way better. So if you want to go ahead and download this, you can actually go in and grab it. Now, I know most of you guys will be saying, you know, what's the plan for Blender? Right now, we're getting 3.0. 3.1 is coming. It's within its alpha. We're having this in beta. What are the folks at Blender? The foundation cooking up what do they want to give us we've seen most of the things we have some demand so hold your horses as we have a lot of things in stock which i would also go ahead and explain more of this later on when we are doing the weekly update so if you go over to this link which i'm going to put in the description there is actually some very pretty cool roadmap for 3.0 first off we've already talked about this one before the version numbering is sort of funny contrary to what you already know which is if i scroll all the way down which is you know the 2.8 to 2.83 3, you know 2.9 all the way to 2.93 that would offer us the LTS, you know, the first versions of LTS. Right now, the 3.0 will start like this. It's going to be 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, all the way to 3.7. And same thing is going to follow up with the 4 series. So this way is basically how the numbering would be. Afterwards, we actually don't know if we're going to be getting 5.0 and all that. But this is what the numbering for the future actually looks like. Now, there is actually a long list of things. And I'm going to put link in the description so that you guys can come through and read these things up for yourself. First off, they will be focusing on building on the existing UI for 2.8 and improving the workflow and other things that 2.8 actually ushered in. So before 3.0 gets released, all module teams will have to check and review ongoing implementations and workflow and come with design documentations with requirements applying what will be accepted to be revised and what will stay away from Blender at this point. So the core model will be empowered to manage code standard and engineering practices everywhere in the Blender code more strictly and this is something that would apply across blender as ongoing projects of architecture and code will continue aiming at better modularity and performances furthermore we have the python script and add-on module which you probably may want to check this out if you're into add-on creation or working with python the modeling tools will also be maintained there's just this big idea for speeding up and managing massive data sets and this is something they're looking at developing even way more the sculpting and painting module also has a couple of things previously we mentioned that there was a proposal from Pablo Dubarro and when we talked about this it came in very very cool because he was then talking about the asset creation and you know the pipeline thing and within this time we looked at how this is going to tie with the asset browser so one of the things that he was looking at is and I think we did mention it that probably we're going to get another viewport or new interface something like that where high resolution meshes can be sculpted in and they can be fed back into Blender and of course, there was also a couple more conversations. So just in case you would like to read more about the performance, how he wishes to incorporate some very cool things like the key mesh, you may want to come through and read it. And this is where we had that conversation about having a separate viewport or having a separate editor. So he says, when it comes to meshes, these can come as a separate editor with its own viewport optimized for rendering as many polygons as possible and non-real-time mesh processing operation. So we might be having that in further iterations of 3.0 but then for those who may want to come through and read about all of this check out the roadmap for blender sculpting tool 
then I'm also going to probably put a link in the description that can lead you right here. But these things are still within a consideration phase. They are not yet set on stone as the final decision on this particular proposal that deals with the sculpting and painting are still pending a design and review workshop with contributors. And this will be probably announced very soon. Texturing is also something that will be having an upgrade as Blender procedural texturing system is in need of urgent upgrade. There is also conversations about the animation tools that will be coming over to 3.0 and above. The UI and the UX, which is the user interface and user experience, is also going to be having some sort of update. We're also looking at assets. Blender 101, which deals with application templates, so you will be able to customize Blender, or, you know, configure Blender for your personal workflow. This is also something that was part of the 2.8, but, you know, we can still get something pretty cool like this coming over to 3.1 and you know further iterations cycles we've already talked about this one before cycles x is a big thing right now so we'll be getting a huge update coming over to cycles EV itself is looking extremely nice. The new design would bring screen space global illumination, more efficient shading, improved volume rendering, panoramic cameras, and a tight grease pencil integration, which is extremely lovely. And all of this will be paving the way for GPU ray trace through Vulkan. Most of you guys have asked for this one, and it should be coming. A real-time compositing system is also planned for EV as well, which is bringing compositing nodes into the 3D viewport. Lovely. Compositing would also be getting some facelift, a couple of you know updates will be coming to this the blender video sequence editor long overdue is already having some new update and there are also some nice improvements that will be coming to this one we've also talked about the viewport the viewport seems to be extremely lovely and a big target for 3.x or for other series of 3. Point e is to move blender to entirely use vulcan open source something you guys have been asking so we'll be getting vulcan and metal backends for blender gpu api and these things are currently being developed and we expect these to be ready to replace opengl backend by the end of 2022 cpu gpu support something pretty cool we saw the folks at Apple join Blender Development Fund. We've seen a couple of cool guys join the development fund as well. AMD, Nvidia, Intel. So we're looking at a place where this will no longer be about the platform, but subsequently we'll be getting cool updates that should allow you work effortlessly and get good performances at the end of the day. AR and VR, cool things are coming. Everything notes, something everybody talks about. We are still trying to see some nice integration with physics as right here, they are saying that the next thing is planning how to introduce beautiful solvers as nodes, add point-based nodes so that you can simulate things like particles and nodes for physics simulation. The hair systems are also a separate topic and here we'll be getting some new new set of nodes coming over to Blender and these are going to be more like subs which are surface operators and right here Blender seems to be considering them as object level animation nodes and this is an open topic as well. Let's talk about real-time mode. Now the physics simulation in Blender is something that needs some work. Of course, we might be getting a whole lot of work now that 3.0 is coming. So in subsequent iterations of 3.0, we'll be getting this. Right now, physics simulation and VR viewing already require a new concept in Blender. Things like time continuous passing and all that stuff. These are things that can be fixed. And at this point, there are certain softwares that actually do this really, really nice. Of course, the design challenges are related to animation, playback, dependency, caching, and optimization, all that stuff. But some tools actually do it very cool. Cinema 4D, for example, the tool that also does this very well is the Adobe Dimension, currently known as Adobe Stager. So this tool, they handle your real-time simulation playback extremely well. And I do know that the folks at Blender Foundation are looking at ways that they can make this thing work very, very fine so that you don't need to cache and recalculate this in every single time during playback. Now the design topic, a node-based editor for event logic and states is also something that they're looking at integrating into this. Meanwhile, Grease Pencil is having a couple of updates. The MPR, which is the non-photorealistic rendering, is also going to be having a couple of updates. Production pipeline and input output would be having some pretty, pretty cool facelift. So some of the things that have been kept or some of the things that will still be kept are industry standard, open VDB, open EXR, open timeline, open color IO, open subdeep, open SL, which is the shader language. And then support for Material X is on the list of things to be discussed and implemented into the upcoming versions of Blender 3.xxx. Now, moving forward, 
Integration with USD is something that is extremely important for Blender's future, for sure, because right now the whole industry is going towards USD. These things are certain things that will definitely put Blender in that spot where people working with several tools that require USD support can actually plug Blender into the pipeline and get things working. Blender and the internet right now known as Meta is still a concept idea that is still being brewed. Of course, this is definitely going to be one of the best things that would happen as primarily the core principle of Blender is that you do not require an internet connection to work with it and that's why you can work with it anywhere. But at certain times, Blender should be able to connect to the web for additional features to work. And what do they mean by this? Example, signaling a user, telling them that there's an update for them to update either their add-on, getting a new release update, you know, browsing asset repository and also sharing data with others just to set up some sort of collaborative environment you probably will be needing internet to get these things up and running now there's a dedicated website that they are looking at and uh, there's also a server which is probably going to be called meta.blender.org there's literally nothing here so it simply means that it hasn't been set up yet and this is more like a proof of concept for things that will be rolling out as online features now one of the things that they are looking at here is by principle and by design only free and open services will be allowed here so there's also a tiny read-up for the research and of course as a free and open source project there is always that continuous need to define the future of 3d tools that exist within the tool set that they're creating a big topic that they need to handle is useful assistance and speed up repetitive task and i believe this is something that every 3d tool needs to fix the whole idea of selecting points every single time there should be a fix for that the whole idea of collision there should be a fix for that and i think this research will definitely come in handy things like uh, uvs a good research should definitely give us something that will speed up that repetitive cutting of uvs thing maybe retopology something like that probably a good research from these or from any other tool will definitely solve that there is a mission statement here and in short the mission statement of blender has always remained that the defend and further the freedom to create exciting times are ahead of us and of course if you'd like to join the conversation here there's going to be a link in the description that can bring you here where you can read up on all of the things you can definitely read up on all of these things the roadmap is crazy lots of cool things coming over to blender and you might want to also download this copy and see some of the cool things that you might you know want to play with and it's very interesting to see that we are getting this version let's go check it out so it's interesting to see that we're getting this version which is blender 3.0 the beta coming full gear it's going to be within your reach very very soon you can download this one start playing with it it's almost complete i guess except for some bug fixes and all that stuff blender 3.0 the beta is here and of course Blender 3.1 Alpha is right here and you can come through and grab it. For sure, there is something in 3.1 that we haven't figured out yet. And I think it's just 50 kilobytes of something because if you look at the file size, 228.08 MB and 228.58 MB. So there's something locking in the shadows. We'll find it out and share it with you guys once it's available. Meanwhile, if you like to follow up and you want to catch up with a long-term support, you can see the long-term support pilot and you would notice that 3.0 is supposed to be released sometime in August the 26th, 2021, but has been moved to sometime in December. And that is going to cause a ripple effect across the timeline. So 3.1 might be coming out within the first quarter of 2022 and then 3.2 maybe second quarter, then 3.3, maybe third. You know, there's definitely going to be a ripple effect. Some way, somehow, we would have some changes in this. So this is more like it. For those who like to read up on this, you want to catch up with this, or probably you would like to read up on all of this beautiful roadmap stuff. Links to this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.